let me try that again <laughs> welcome ladies and gentlemen to this and that um oh my god it completely threw me off i forgot to switch on my mic apologies uh so in today's episode this is ukraine episode two and we are going to cover what happened to ukraine and why it happened for you not to click or search for a thousand different videos which explain in detail what happened and then trying to combine it, combine it into one piece of information so you understand I'm just going to do this in one whole episode. So uh, what are we going to start with? What We're going to start with what happened. And it is pretty simple if you think about it. <laughs> Russia invaded Ukraine, but actually it's not that simple. So what actually started the whole situation and what happened? The thing that happened is that we, obviously after leaving the Soviet Union, there was still a lot of pro-Soviet um, Union people and the same kind of structure of government and, and the rest uh, was, you know, this is, it's pretty hard to separ separate from a regime which you had before. So once we did that, once we left the Soviet Union, we still had a lot of pro-Russian uh, people in our government and just in general, you know, we, we are like brothers, so we loved each other. It was not an issue for us, but we had a lot of old bad habits, let's put it that way. So what happened, it reached to a point where Russia you know, it was starting to trying to re re regain its territory, regain its control over the countries that actually left the Soviet Union. Putin started all of that. Nobody else, really. It's nobody else's fault. It's just Putin started all of that by himself. And of course, with a lot of help from the surrounding people from the KGB and whatever, I don't know the details, but Putin started it. It wasn't the Russian people. Let's get this straight. It wasn't the actual people who wanted to fight Ukrainians. It was Putin. So eventually, of course, we had a lot of pro-Russian people and we got a president which was super pro-Russian. Uh, Ukrainian people wanted to move to the EU, wanted to be closer to the EU. He didn't. And that sparked a revolution. The revolution started on 18th of February 2014. And uh, we call it Maidan. Uh, on the internet, I found that it's called the Revolution of Dignity, which actually makes sense. We were trying to, you know, recapture, regain our dignity. A lot of people died. A hundred people died right in the center of the capital. Uh, we even named the, the street after them. Uh, we called it the, the, the Holy 100. I guess that would be the appropriate translation, Nibesna Sotnya. So we overthrew our government, overthrew our pro-Russian government, which didn't want to connect us to Europe and have trade agreements, etc., etc., etc. Because that would lead Ukraine to be able to join NATO, and Russia definitely does not want NATO neighbors next to it. It likes a buffer zone or it would like to recapture the whole territory, the whole USSR as it used to be. So because of the revolution, an interesting thing happened right after that. Basically, within 10 days, Russia invades Crimea, which is a huge, 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 huge island that is Ukrainian and it invades and it invades it uh, by saying that there is a lot of Russian people and you had a revolution and it's dangerous there in your country so we're going to take this under our control to protect our people which is a load of crap okay <laughs> it's just 50 50 there and believe me nobody wanted to join Russia I guarantee you that because the conditions in Ukraine are way better than in Russia so 2014 passes, they have a part of Ukraine, a part of the country is in shambles. This was the revolution. These are the photos of the revolution. Let me move the camera a little bit so you can, so you can see the enlarged photos better. 
this is what happened during the revolution in the capital of our city. A lot of crazy stuff was going on, but we managed to overthrow our government. So then after we did that, like I said, the Russians invade Ukraine by saying that there is a lot of Russian people that we need to protect, which are close to our border. So we're going to take that. And not mentioning that, of course, there's the biggest port in the sea, which belongs to Ukraine, and it's a strategic port. Let's not get into the details right now. This is what happened in 2014. What happened in 2022? Russia says there is too many Nazis in Ukraine, so we have to denazify the country. Okay. Let me just show you a little bit of what we had to deal with. And this is in 2014, when our country was pro-Russian and our army was all sold off and in a terrible state because the president and everybody was just pocketing their money and, and it was just ridiculous. This is, just watch this video, this is what we had to deal with, okay? When we had our revolution, we overthrew our government, everybody's super happy and excited, and then Russia invades you with this. Thank you to Viral Videos for bringing all of these videos into a bunch, because I would need to open like a hundred different videos, but here there's a nice compilation. Uh, thumbs up to Viral Videos. Just look at the sheer amount of helicopters, right? Imagine you're driving along the street and then a country invades you with this amount of force and your army is in complete shambles. What do you do? Nothing. Just watch, basically. There was, of course, a lot of resistance. The patriots, they had, they, they held the line and they didn't let Russia proceed any further. But most of the army was not capable to retaliate to this. This is just ridiculous. Just a swarm, hundreds and hundreds of helicopters flying in. And it was, it was just terrible and scary and nobody knew what to do because it was unexpected let me show you this little bit here yeah this one just look at that just swarms of helicopters so this is what happened in 2014 in 2022, this didn't happen because we were preparing for it this whole time. For how many years? 2014? For eight years, we were preparing for the continuation. And this is where they stopped at this moment. So now you know what happened. We had a revolution. We were weak at the point. Russia invaded us once. Russia invaded us tw twice to no success the second time whatsoever. Now, let's get to the interesting part. Why it all happened. And I will tell you many reasons of how it could have been avoided. I'll tell you, and I will tell you the main reason of why it happened. So let's start, let's, let's clear something up. Like, straight away denazification <laughs> i'm sorry it just makes me giggle straight away denazification this is this is what putin is saying that why he invaded ukraine or why not an invasion of a country but a special operation to denazify or i don't know whatever he called it it's super it's a super funny reason Sorry about the delays. I'm, I'm still a little a bit learning of how to do this and speak to a camera. But anyway, I'm speaking to you. 
So he tried to denazify de Ukraine or whatever it is he said with his super cool mission. Um, I will tell you, I will be honest with you, 100%. I lived in Ukraine for many years and I lived in Ukraine for the past five years. So let me tell you this. I have only seen this, the, the whole, my whole life, I have seen one gra graffiti on a bridge and it said white power. That was the only thing I saw. Okay, maybe I saw a swastika somewhere on a garage somewhere. But I guarantee you that it is just, it has been, those signs have been there for so long. And I think it came somewhere in the 99 or 2000s after some idiots probably watched American History X or something like that. Because there was no new sign. I have not seen a skinhead ever. So don't talk to me about denazification. We we love we we love everybody. Ukrainians are just those kind of people. We love everybody and we have nothing to do with racism. We have all the nationality. We have a lot of uh, Indian students, a lot of Chinese students, you you name it. Our universities they love taking foreign students and our, the foreign students learn Ukrainian and Russian and and they learn to be great doctors and great IT people. We have some of the best IT in Ukraine. But the point being is we are not racist. And we, what, what, what racism are they talking about? Like, I don't know. We have, we love rappers, you know, we have, we have this great, we have a great rapper. Her name is Alona Alona. She's like the Ukrainian Missy Elliott. Okay. Well, maybe not like, Missy Elliott, not as good as Missy Elliott, but she's a hardworking girl and she she will get there eventually. I actually met her once and she's just fantastic. So give her a thumbs up, check out her music. It's, it's pretty fun. It's super fun, super interesting. And it's actually really good and, you know, makes you want to move. So we are not racist at all. We are good people. So there is no Nazis. Forget about that forever. Don't ever bring it up. Don't ever bring up special operation. No, just just call it what it is, an invasion. That's what it is. So that's, now that we're done with that, let's get to the reasons. And maybe some of the things that could have prevented the invasion. So the first thing is I want to mention is that it's not just, Russia's fault. It is also the fault of the whole world and Ukrainians as well. Let me tell you why. It is the fault of the whole world, especially Europe, because Europe is extremely, extremely dependent on Russian oil. And if Russia cuts oil, it cuts power. So Europe will be powerless. So Europe made itself super extremely dependent on Russian oil. And you're telling me, well, what can we do if Russia has so much oil? Well, look, when Fukushima happened, you know, it was an accident. And guys, believe me, you did not have to shut down most of your nuclear power plants because nuclear energy, just do your research, is the safest and is the most economical and is the best. We will eventually move to that because why? Because this is what happens. You stick with fossil fuels, you're screwed by Russia. Or Putin, let's put it that way. You're screwed by a shitty government. So that's the fault of Europe by being too dependent on Russian oil and not developing their own infrastructure and their own power and electricity. That is just, that is just ridiculous, you know, by, I don't know, it's the it's the full fossil fuel magnets that um, magnates i'm sorry that make that may that help these stupid decisions by shutting down nuclear power plants but that's a different topic so we've touched up a little bit on the fault of europe the fault of ukrainians well to be honest after 2014 
a lot of Ukraine still would work with the Russian government. A lot of Ukrainians would work with Russian markets. And that is not the reason why Russia invaded. It's just people didn't care about that enough. If the economy would, if we would have distanced ourselves from from the Russian regime, it would have been much harder on the Russians as well, you know, and it would have maybe prevented all of this. It's not the sole reason, of course, don't get me wrong, but working with, it's just this post-Soviet mentality, but the 90s mentality that is so hard to get rid of, where people think that the government is not the good part, you know, just make your money, whatever, whatever, whatever way you can possibly make it, even if it's, even if it's working with the, with the enemy, basically, you know, so I'm glad that we got rid of that mentality, <laughs> but it was a little bit too late. Uh, it, it actually got to, to a funny point where um, so there were so many open spots for Ukrainian embassies in different countries, like the, the first secretary, the second secretary, even for ambassadors or whatever. And those positions wouldn't be filled up. They wouldn't be filled up because people would automatically think that those positions are already taken by somebody. And these competitions and these... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I would say the competitions and job offers, they were already kind of taken by somebody. They were just out there just to make a show as if they're hiring from somewhere else. But no, no, our government actually is great. And it actually looked for people. People are just mentally weren't ready for the freedom away from the Soviet bureaucracy and whatever the hell that was. You know, they weren't ready for they weren't ready to be transparent they weren't ready to be 100 percent good so they didn't they wouldn't even apply for those jobs because they thought they were taken by somebody already and it was just a bit ridiculous so th this this is what i want to um cover in the fault of europe and our fault we let our politicians continue to be corrupt we let we let the system be corrupt and we try to maybe go around the system instead of actually uh, doing something to change it you know many people were changing it but many people were still holding back and that held us back by quite a lot and led us to this and it was one of the reasons that also led us to this situation so the second reason and I'm sorry, there's there's five points I want to cover here. And the fifth one is the best one. These the first four reasons are a little bit of a warm up and kind of like a, the catalyst that made everything happen. So the second reason is, of course, jealousy. Putin and his buddies realized that Ukraine, no matter what, is still doing better than Russia. We have lower taxes, we have lower prices, we have better produce, we have better opportunities, we have offers made from governments, we have loans from governments for new businesses. Ukrainians were coming to, uh, I'm sorry, Russians were coming to Ukraine, living there, not wanting to come back to their Krasnodar or whatever it is, hellhole they came from because no matter where you are in Ukraine, you're still doing better than some of the than most of the places in Russia, except the two capitals I would call them, which is Moscow and Saint Petersburg. Okay, so anywhere else is not good. In Ukraine, everywhere is good if you're a hardworking person. You work hard, you get rewarded. That's how Ukraine is. No, there's no discrimination. No nothing. Everybody gets exactly what they deserve and what they work for. Or, so yes, jealousy. Jealousy. Also, we have free medicine in Ukraine. Maybe you didn't know that, but 
yes, it is free. You can go to a doctor. You don't need to pay him a thousand dollars to get inside. We don't have some European system. We don't need health insurance. None of that. You can call an ambulance and it will come to you for free, treat you, take you to the hospital. And if it's a critical condition, yes, maybe they might ask for some money for some medicine. Of course, that's fine. But no more than that. Some difficult operations, yes, they cost money, but not ridiculous money insurance companies might ask or, or whatever. Therefore, Putin and the Belarusian president, they look at Ukraine, and they're like, oh, look, those guys are doing so good and our people are le leaving to live there. This was not one of the reasons. Believe me, they just had enough of us doing really good. They just had it. It was definitely one of the catalysts to spark this whole war. Another thing I want to tell you is, a lot, I know a lot of you might not agree with me, but whether you believe in God, whether you believe in karma, whether you believe in the universe, the galaxy, or, or Buddha, or whatever it is, when you have sinned enough or have done enough bad things, it's going to bite you back. It's just going to bite you back. Let's just call it karma for the sake of it. Now, reason number three, karma. And collective karma. Although Ukrainians are great people, and the country was thriving and everything is amazing. A lot of Ukrainians would, like I mentioned earlier, would still work uh, on the Russian market. They would still forgive and they would forget, which was wrong. Also, Ukraine would, a lot of businesses in Ukraine would participate in scams. And you're probably f familiar with it um, from YouTube by Indians scamming. Usually it's India. I forgot that little city they have, like it's like a super scam city. So Ukrainians would do that as well. Uh, call centers, the stupid, the stupid call centers that would scam you, the, the bride agencies that would scam you, the cryptocurrency platforms that would scam you, the financial market platforms that would scam you. There was we were basically like on the level of India in scamming. And you might like it or not, but karma is going to get you back. And this collective karma was also a big contributor to this war. I'm, I'm not saying, I know you might not agree with me. I know you might say that the people who didn't do it, they didn't deserve this. But... I still think it was a big reason why this is happening to us as a nation because we do have our own collective karma and I'm sorry to say but there is a way that you had to pay back for what you for what everybody did I was working in a I was working in a dating agency and as soon as one girl said, well, I don't want to date. I just want you guys to pay me for the photos and I'll come for the chats with the guys, but I don't want to see them, any of them. I was like, okay, this is about the time that I leave the company because so far all the girls were real and I made a lot of friends from America, from Austria, from England who were great people. And I made these friends because of this job and everything was going great. But as soon as it started to look a little scammy, I left because, well, I believe in karma. I believe in God. So I do not want to get punished for these things that really are in my control to avoid. Uh, that was the third point. The fourth reason why it happened in 2022 again, why Russia invaded us again, instead of staying on whatever they got and not risking the chance of losing everything <laughs> that they have captured so far. Uh, sorry, the Putin's, Putin's office, let's put it that way. 
so the reason is the fourth and the most stupidest one, I guess, is that they just misinformation. We were training for the Russian invasion for eight years, right? Eight years. We had training from England. We, we had training from, from America. All of those highly qualified soldiers came to Ukraine and trained our army for the past eight years. And we have been accumulating and rebuilding our army and reorganizing. And it was a privilege to go to the army. So I don't know what they told him. If the if Putin's office thought that they will have just this flyby around our around our country without any consequences again, they were gravely mistaken. I don't know how they could have not anticipated a heavy resistance not just because of the training because of the patriotism everybody went to the army any chance they could it was prestige it's prestigious you're defending your country against an enemy who who everybody doesn't like everybody hates putin and his stupid regime even the russians do you might not think they do but they really do. Excuse me. So this is the, one of the stupidest reasons. Is how? What did the generals tell Putin exactly? Did they tell him like, oh yeah, it's fine. We're just going to do like a flyby and a drive-by. You know, like we do it wherever. And, and, and they're just going to crumble and run away. Where did you get that information? Did you even check? Or were they so sure that we will be scared of these hundreds and hundreds of helicopters for the second time? No, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, we are not stepping on the same rake again. And that, that really screwed everything up for them. Now, now they're actually losing. But we'll get to that in video number three. In episode number three. And last but not least, the actual and most important reason why Russia is invading Ukraine. And you would say, well, yes, it's the Nazification, but we just covered that. No, no. The one and only reason is money. And let me show you why. Now, this topic can be covered for a very long time, like in this video, for 13 one minutes. Please visit Real Life Lore. This dude or his team, I don't know if it's one guy or many, he is fantastic. You should watch all of his videos. They are amazing. They're just wonderful. He has even some something on uh, Nebula, some more videos which are demonetized. Anyway, follow this guy. Watch this video. I will cover it briefly. As you might know, there's, there, there's a saying which says all wars start because of a woman. Well, no, not in this case. Actually, maybe in this case, maybe Putin fell in love with some beautiful, gorgeous Ukrainian girl and she told him no. So he got pissed off, you know, and just went, he's like, I'll destroy your whole, whole country. Maybe. But the other reason is money nobody would go to your country to try and denazify they don't they don't care nobody is touching north korea you know nobody's going to free the people in in uh, nigeria or 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 where this 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 whole diamond trade with with a lot of uh, or or what's the other country called uh, they have pirates uh they always have the pirates attacking the ships. Anyway, nobody goes to those countries to free their people. Because they're so good and so nice and we want everybody in the whole world to be happy. No, if there is no resources there, nobody's going there. 
If there is guerrilla jungle warfare, nobody's going there because they know every branch. It's, it's a lost situation. Nobody cares about the people. Welcome to, to the 2000s. Welcome to humanity. Nobody will do something for free. But everybody will start a war if you take away their money. So here we go. Let me just make this a little bigger. Europe is the biggest consumer of Russian oil. If you didn't know that. Because Europe itself does not have much of it. And they don't want to use nuclear power. Why? Because they got scared of one Fukushima incident. And trust me, the Chernobyl incident is a completely different story. It's just Soviet crap building. Anyway, so all of this oil that Russia is eating, that Europe is eating, consuming from Russia, most of it was actually going through Ukraine. So once Ukraine became independent from the USSR, it started taxing. It started putting fees. You know, you want to feed the oil to Europe through my country? Pay, pay a fee. Which is a lot of billion dollars. A lot of billion do dollars annually. And obviously, nobody likes that. Nobody likes, you know, paying a part of your money because you want to sell something to somebody. It's like, why should, why should we pay for transportation? And this is what this video actually covers here as well. As you can see... Most of the oil goes through Ukraine. So when Russia invaded Ukraine, they hoped that they would, when they had the pro-Russian government in Ukraine, this was not an issue. This was no problem because the money that the fees were being paid was probably shared amongst the governments and whatever, you know, everybody was happy. What happened then? In, 2000, in 2013, Ukraine found out, I'm sorry, I apologize. In 2012, Ukraine found ridiculous amounts of oil in the sea and ridiculous amounts of gas inland. But that was not an issue. We had a pro-Russian government. So, you know, Ukraine wouldn't, you know, take business away from Russia. No, it wouldn't. Once we overthrew our government, and don't say that was our fault. Once we overthrew our government, we co once we overthrew our government, obviously, we did not have the ability to, we did not have the ability to build all these oil refining and oil uh, and all of these factories and all of these uh, what the wells. We had no resources to build them. So here comes Shell and here comes Exxon, the biggest oil companies in the world and they're like well ukraine now that you overthrew your government great news they're no longer pro-russian so maybe we can build maybe we can refine and get some of this oil out of the ground and some of this gas and ukraine said yes of course sure go ahead you build them for us we give you some percentage of whatever our income and everybody's happy wrong russia is not happy not only that it was already paying fees for the, for the pipes, the fees for getting the oil to Europe through our country. Now, with these ridiculous amounts of oil that we found, we would close these pipes and we would take a lot of the business away from Russia. So, what's the best solution? Invade the country. And that's exactly what happened in 2014. They invaded Crimea, this island you see here. 
where all this great beautiful oil is the oil that was going to put russia out of business and this is not a joke i can't actually believe that all of you didn't even know that this is the main and only reason for russia's invasion of ukraine it was it's the sole reason the money it's always the money it's either the girl or the money in this look at how much shale gas we found and what does russia do of course it invades the part of ukraine you see shell was coming and what does it do revolution happened they invade crimea we're stuck and russia still doing business with with europe this happened europe was still buying russian oil they had no choice they were closing down their nuclear power stations just to be more dependent on russian oil why then now that they blocked everything up in 2014 obviously shell and exxon said well now you have a war in your country so we're kind of not going to continue building our beautiful factories for ukraine to ship oil and gas into europe but in 2014 we did not give up our country still kept growing stronger and kept getting better and still was making more money more and more money people were getting stronger they had better health care now they had they had more money to spend because they had better job we were striving we were still after an invasion we were still striving and they just couldn't take it anymore it reached a point where that's it like we started to start to do pushes on the on the front line and we started getting more weapons because our allies started seeing that that we are now getting a bit more capable and we started to push back and still strive and i think that just broke the russian regime completely they couldn't take it anymore they just had to take all of it or nothing and that's where the fourth reason comes in stupid miscalculation they messed up really bad they couldn't do it they couldn't take it please watch this video it's a 30 minutes video it's well worth it well well worth it because it will explain the whole thing in in detail uh, i will just go over the points that i want to say there is no nazis in ukraine forget about it okay this is partially all our fault we let russia get so powerful by being dependent on their oil this is the russian government being super jealous of ukraine just doing super well even in war conditions this is our collective karma boys and girls next time you want to go work somewhere or do something you know just think about the future stupid putin's miscalculations and of course point number five the only reason we are at war now is money thank you very much for watching if you want a little introduction about ukraine actually it's 15 minutes long i will try to make my video shorter if you want to see an introduction about ukraine watch the previous video you will find it on my youtube it's called this is ukraine episode one uh, it tells about how i left ukraine and how it was doing uh, also there's another episode going to be coming out uh, this is ukraine episode three and it's going to cover of what is happening now and probably a few predictions about the future of what's going to happen in the future thank you very much for watching wherever you're watching this please subscribe or follow or like or whatever it is button you have to click because i'm trying to get this channel going and it's really hard believe me it's super super hard it's way harder than you might think uh, also i apologize for any for my speech i know it's not perfect this this moment i'll get better i'll get my videos shorter more entertaining Thank you for watching.
Love you very much. Support Ukraine. Peace. And bye-bye.